two of the most desirable business sedans in a comparison test here on Autogefühl with Thomas, head to head with the Audi A6 versus the BMW 5 Series, both with the three liter petrol engines, both six cylinders. Let's go. We start with the Audi, typical Bauhaus design, rectangular, really large single frame grille here with the sport look, with the blacked out design. This is also the S-Line exterior package with the sport here, accentuations in the lower part here. LED, yes, but these are not the matrix LED headlamps, so it is missing one option. Therefore, the daytime running light doesn't look that cool actually, but you can of course get it. Tango red is this color. And here at the BMW, we have the blue stone metallic color. Blue stone? Isn't it just gray or something? Well, whatever. <laughs> and here we have the laser lamps. This is also an option. And they have these blue accentuations. And the daytime running light has this, you know, swinging style. This 5 Series here recently updated or recently facelifted. There, the headlamps have, you know, more integrated features. So it looks a little bit sleeker on the front but not less body, of course, even wider actually with that huge double kidney here than also in the black styling for today. The question is here in the front exterior styling, it's, hot, yeah, it's more often just a matter of preference. Which one is you? Like just from a, like if you have to decide right now, which one would you take from a from design? Tell me in the comments. As for the side profile, same length, almost five meters, just a couple of centimeters difference, but not nothing majorly. Interesting that design-wise, the 5 Series looks more agile, I think, especially with the design line right here, the dropping line dividing in light and shadow. Just more agility to the whole vehicle, I think. Here in this case with 18-inch winter tires. So that's how it looks like when the tires are also some more like more balloonish or in winter time. Of course, would look even more impressive than in summertime. And we also have the shadow line. That means we have the black frames around the windows. We also have this black package with the Audi today here. So very well comparable, S-Line exterior, 19 inch winter tires. So a little bit bigger than both come with adaptive suspension as an option with the BMW, the normal level suspension here is the option then that you can go for the adaptive air suspension. But it will be very interesting to compare these then in the driving part, definitely. I think the A6 more has this business sedan style here. So from the design, not that sporty, a little bit more elegant, especially here in this area. And you can see the dropping lines are kind of split right here. Yeah, very interesting to compare it here. And as for the rear, I think they look kind of similar from the rear, don't they? Of course, here the 5 Series, a little bit different from the headlamps, a little bit higher. These horns have been facelifted. They now have a more three-dimensional design. I think really cool and real exhaust tips here for the 540i. The A6, once again, with the dark styling here. This is an option that you get everything in black, also with the black Audi rings. You do not have to go for that one. It's a special black package, actually, and in the lower part. <whistles> Auto fuel, fake exhaust police, alert here. Pure fake exhaust, the real exhaust underneath. So the exhaust battle is won by BMW here in this case, but the overall design thing, in this case, I really have to say I love both from the exterior styling. What about you? Turning indicator comparison looks great with the BMW right there. In this case, a little bit poor with the Audi, but the reason is here, look at the Audi. This is the base headlamp. <sighs> but I think, I mean, the car for that price, should not even offer this base headlamp with this, you know, standard turning indicator, I think. In the matrix LED option, where it looks really amazing and uh, you have the more elaborated indicator, then, then maybe it even looks cooler. But here in this case, we have the high spec headlamp with the BMW and the low spec headlamp with the Audi. Um, that's then the case here, where for this reason, it loses this small element. And the same accounts also in the rear, but if you would have the, you know, higher spec Audi, then you would have the cascading turning indicators. They look actually better than the BMWs, but this is also a very nice solution here. Very slim, right? Key for comparison, both nice and works well in the pocket. Um, I think here with that ring, it's a little bit less practical with the BMW that makes the uh, key bulky, so I would remove that ring here. Um, the Audi looks a little bit more premium at first, but maybe it might collect more scratches and fingerprints. This one here with the matte design with the BMW, but I like both actually. And we start with the interior with the Audi with the door closing sound. Oh, lovely. Look at that. 
Well, hear that. Wow. One of the best door closing sounds. That's awesome. The only thing is that they don't close that. You see that? They don't close easily. So I think because the insulation here is so well done and here that you really, see that doesn't work. You really have to hammer them that they properly close, but then the closing sound is awesome indeed. And also the build quality on the inside here looks really nice. Clicking sound here for the window levers as well. That's a lovely thing to have. And then this interior, S-line interior as well, perforation and on the steering wheel, for example, that looks really fancy. And then they, you know, they basically repeat this design from the front grille on the steering wheel. I love this design detail. Then sporty S seats here. Seating materials is depending on the market. On the US market, you can go only animal skin. And on the UK and German market, you can also get, for example, microfiber on the inside. It's a mix, but they always contain animal material here with the Audi A6. So that's not that progressive. The seat ergonomics, however, are really good. So like the base form from the seat, and um, it will be a little bit more breathable for the Dynamica microfiber variants we can get in the UK and in Germany. You feel like in a typical sedan, at the same time, it's not too low and not uncomfortable at all. Super comfortable ergonomics. And here, steering wheel with a very smooth process. This is a manual version here, but you can easily live with that. And what I love is direct input here, volume at the steering wheel muting it to click it for example left side you control the digital instruments and everything resonates very well clicking sounds it still has then some kind of analog interface although we have screens here but important functions on the steering wheel can still be clicked and not this hashtag capacitive bs we see so often now today's in the car industry headroom with 189 or six foot two no problem a lot of headroom with both wheels you can choose a panoramic roof. These two vehicles we have here today do not have it. They have a lot of other options. And at the end of the day, I'll also tell the price differences will also be very interesting, I can promise. Interior overview, super clean with the Audi. Here, the steering wheel, once again, with these great buttons. Once, wow, what a clean design, I love that. And then we have the two screens here, both touch screens. Here, the car internal GPS is usable and the menu structure it's all wire touch, no turning knob, but the menu structure is actually overall quite simple. For example, here you can access all the car features and so on. For example, here the drive select, where you can also access it from below, because when you click below, you can also change it. Here the air suspension is also going up or down, depending on the driving mode, for example. And the CarPlay or Android Auto integration, wired or wireless, here you can choose, actually, and that's a good thing, and Bang & Olufsen sound system is, especially when you turn up that 3D surround sound, wow, it's amazing. So, wow, that is lovely. And I think um, the Harman Kahn system in the BMW is also very good, but I think this one even tops it a little. Lower part then with the second screen, temperature control is with, you know, like sliding or pressing here. You know, I do prefer real dials, but for a touchscreen solution, it's probably the best touchscreen solution I've seen. It's big enough and so on. And also has some interesting things. For example, if you have two zone AC and want to have it synchronized again, you do this swiping gesture and it's synchronized again. That's also interesting. Seat heating is in the lower part. And when you use the car internal GPS, the lower screen changes. And then you can type when you're standing still or when you're driving, you have then this um, writing function. B. Digital instruments in the Audi. They look really fancy. You can change the view, have this one bigger, for example. You can also have the GPS map in the middle part, but only the car internal GPS, though. And also the Audi offers a head-up display there. They're also quite equal each. Nice big shifting lever still here. And then this can be put open, very well attached to my USB-C charger, inductive charging pad, but especially the iPhone does quickly overheat here. Interesting thing, by the way, in the Audi with the seat belt here on the passenger side, that's what you sometimes hear while driving. That's annoying. And it's always like an Audi or VW that they are attached on the inside of the doors in that way. And here, when you move them down, this is the solution, then, it, then it's tight. And then you don't hear that while driving or you would need to attach them. Uh, but this is always the, you know, the good solution. Always slide it down, actually. So, um, yeah, 
but let's see how it is in the BMW later. Now the rear seating area. Let's take a look here first. So yeah, it looks actually quite cool. The middle console is large, so it won't leave too much space then in this case. What about legroom and so on? And here inside of the doors, this nice soft touch material right here. Very well done here as for the whole finish, also for the window levers here in the back. So yeah, that looks really good for the finish. When I'm driving as a tall driver in the front, leave some legroom, no problem for at least four tall adults here. Headroom also, both don't have panoramic roof option here today. Some headroom is left and it's, yeah, it's definitely fairly comfortable due to that um, huge middle console. Uh, of course, the middle seat is kind of tricky. Yeah, somehow works, not the most comfortable position, but it still works. And I really like this separate climate unit um, they have them here in the rear, also with clicking sounds then. It is a screen, yes, but still clicking sounds and two USB-C chargers then here. Meanwhile, in the middle part, we can fold this one down, some space plus cup holders, and they are also adaptive here in the rear. Now rear seating here of the BMW. Let's take a look first. Also nice entry, but yeah, when you already see that looks a little bit closer here. It looks quite equal from that middle part here because both have also this all-wheel drive thing. And also here, nice material choices here. Everything also very well done. So build quality seems both great. But here, legroom wise, yeah, it works, but closer. And the Audi also has this recess here, left and right. So legroom wise, clearly a win for the Audi. You see here that the bench is, I think, bent a little bit more like this from the angle. And seating comfort wise, it's actually quite fine. So also good comfort, but you see here, I think my legs are, you know, they have more space here. And also BMWs typically like for decades have a very large area here and you don't have too much space here for your outer elbow so overall i think yes when sitting here it's comfortable headroom is also comparable no problem here for tall adults so you'll get along with both definitely really nice comfort um, but i think the crucial thing would be if you are very tall then the audi would be your choice in the rear so if you're driving a lot of times like with four tall adults for example then the Audi leads it. Otherwise, the comfort is also fine in the BMW middle seat here. It's a little bit firmer here in the middle part, so also not ideal. So indeed, the difference is the Audi just offers a little bit more legroom. That's clear, but the comfort here itself, and we're a little bit, you know, a little bit shorter. It's comparable here. Equal system, a little bit more space. Uh, where's that? You can't fold up this. That's astonishing. Here cup holders, they are also some adaptive, but not as adaptive. Oh, somehow I activated the rear, <laughs> the rear climate unit here, which I found cooler with the BMW because you can still have the real turning diets here. That's cool. And um, yeah, now I could, uh, yeah, I must have hit this one then activated it actually. Also seat heating for the rear is available, but that's an option. Now the interior of the BMW in the front. Oh yeah, <laughs> I always close the BMW here. Uh, when I put my finger here, that's how to close it. And then here, that's how to open it with the keyless entry. And then, oh, the door closing sound is way worse. That's a clear difference. So door closing sound battle is, yeah, that's the thing here. Won by the Audi, and then inside the doors. The build quality here is also very nicely done. Maybe looks a little bit more premium with the Audi, or what do you, do you guys think? The interior has some kind of sport here touched as first sight at least. Also, it's the M Sport steering wheel, for example. We also still have real buttons at the steering wheel. That's nice. Um, the clicking sound is a little bit better in the Audi though. This is an easy thing here to reach the steering wheel heating. That's also an option. Then here, this is the animal skin seat, but for the 5 Series, since the facelift, you can get new perforated sensor tech seats and they are great in comfort, actually way more comfortable than these ones here because they are plusher from the surface and also softer and have the perforation. They are also more breathable and so on. 
and of course better for animals and also for the environment when you really look at the whole energy that is in, in put in the production and so on. Seating comfort here at first sight is still quite nice. When I start the engine here, the um, steering wheel comes down then. There's a comfort entry function. Yeah, that, that's six in the level, right? Uh, yeah, the sound I think is definitely better with the BMW or what's your take on that. So steering wheel here with the electric function up and down, in and out. Um, the steering wheel itself, um, that's a tough question. I mean, also it's a nice size. Steering wheel itself, I think a little bit better with the Audi and the seating comfort here. Yeah, the ergonomics also seem better with the Audi, but uh, when you have the perforated center tech seats, the comfort difference is not as large. Maybe they, they are then also better. So it really depends on the concise trim. In the US, the perforated center tech seats are standard now and in Germany as well. The headroom, by the way, also no problem. Plenty of them available here with the BMW too. Oh, by the way, here at BMW, here, the seat belt holder is not attached here up there. It's more down. That's why this area here does not have, you know, the, this sound effect. So it's a better solution here sound wise, but you cannot adjust it in here. It's just fixed in one height. Interior overview, I would say a little bit less clean here with the BMW, but more driver oriented actually. So everything is lent a little bit towards the driver. That's speaking more for this BMW philosophy. On the steering wheel, still well to control. And also here, for example, for the volume selection, shifting pedals. Um, yeah, that more speaks to, hey, let's attack, you know, let's attack the road actually. Still a lot of manual buttons, for example, here for the volume control. And also that's what I really love here. Still the manual climate unit. This is a screen in here, but to control the temperature here is the real control. So that's easy and straightforward. So really like that indeed. Let's zoom on this to the screen up there. Here in the lower part, for example, you can slide this one open. Then you have cup holders behind it. And the inductive charging pit is in the front. Here uh, for the iPhone, it still works, uh, but if you would have the Plus or the Max, then it would not fit the um, inductive charging pad there in the front. You still also have a real BMW shifting lever here. That's giving you a good sporty feeling. Drive mode selection is here. And in contrast to the Audi here, you can still control the infotainment system from below. So that's good to do that, for example, while driving that you don't have to use the, the, the screen here. By the way, if the screen is flickering now, we tried everything from the shutter speed. It doesn't work, that it, that's not flickering, but on real life, it does not flicker. And here, quite smooth. Infotainment system is fast enough. This is the OS 7, the older version, not like in the all new versions. And this is the integration. CarPlay and Android Auto are wireless only, actually. And the same song, but with the Harman Kardon sound system, it's a good song, a good, yeah, good song anyway, but good sound, I mean. Uh, but actually, the Bagen Olufsen system in the Audi has a better three-dimensional sound indeed. Here, there's a split armrest, so easier to open in a way, and but you don't have too much space down there, another USB-C charger. Digital instruments, uh, when you turn on the engine like this, they come alive and... Um, in this case, in this view here, you don't have the RPMs in that view. You can have the car internal GPS in the middle part. But when you go to the sports mode, for example, gauge exchange, and then you also here have the RPM on the right side. Yeah, boom, boom. And you have a head-up display. You can also adjust the height or something. It's always sharper in real life than it appears on camera, by the way, especially in here uh, yeah, with these raindrops that start to come here from time to time today. Oh, and by the way, once again here, integration of the ambient lighting. The Audi also offers one, but it's not equipped with the vehicle today. Uh, another option, but here you can very well see this nice blue line in the ambient light here in the BMW. What about the trunk space? So let's start with the Audi here. Cabin trolley, let's see how much space we have here in the vertical way, no problem. The width here, easily a meter of 40 inches and the length is, is like 120 in meters or 47 inches the height about 50 centimeters or 19 inches very well usable square dimensions but what about the bmw let's move over so let's take a look right here we also have a different cabin trolley in here 
build up. Well, oh, that looks like more space here. Um, we have this step here, but then we can lift nothing up. So that's pro and con definitely. Um, let's check out the width first. So it was a meter or 40 inches with the Audi. And I mean, here in the front, yes, easily, but then there uh, you are limited. So it is not as wide as with the Audi. The length was 120 with the Audi. It's a little bit less than 120, it's like 115 or 45 inches. The only thing is here in the height, it's 54 centimeters or 21 inches. So here with the 5 Series, not as wide, especially in this area. A little bit shorter, but a little bit higher. Hmm. Not sure if the height would be the crucial thing. Maybe in most cases width is more a crucial thing. So I think here probably one with the Audi. And you know, just forgot forgot to show you that. Um, we have this net here, and then you can also fold up this and have even more space underneath it. You can also fit a spare tire here. So I think then in this case, closely one by the Audi. Engines, I picked totally comparable ones. Both 3 liter six cylinder with around 340 horsepower, depends on the market and the unit, and both with the acceleration figure around five seconds. Well, but the BMW is the inline six cylinder, there you can see also in this visualization, they're in the row right there, just behind uh, after each other. And this engine here is to me the best in the BMW lineup, actually. You can get it with X-Drive, with the overdrive or rear-wheel drive. The special thing about the BMW is also available as rear-wheel drive. And of course, also with smaller engines, diesel, plug-in hybrid, and so on and so on. And on the Audi side, also petrol, plug-in hybrid, diesel. Here then with a V6 setup, you can also see it in here in the visualization 3.3. And when you pick the quattro overdrive drive here with the big engines, it is still rear-wheel bias. It's then 40% in front, 60% in the rear, a permanent all-wheel drive. Smaller Audi engines have the front rear bias. So in this case then, the engine would be better with the BMW, so to speak, when you have rear-wheel drive only, versus the smaller ones with having the quattro uh, all-wheel drive with front rear bias. Then you have a sportier setup than here. But which one sounds better? Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, starting here with the BMW 540i, the six-cylinder in the 5 Series, and we go with the Autobahn acceleration, and we'll start at about 40 kilometers an hour, sports mode, I'll also go to the sports shifting mode, let's go. One fifty. And 200 kilometers an hour, and I drop it right here a little bit off because the road is getting wet. And so far, it's not that wet yet, but of course, we have to be careful. That all wheel drive acceleration was, of course, quite safe, and there was no other car on the round. So, still, I recommend not driving that fast when it's rainy. And I also dropped the speed here now a little bit. They change here, really safe. The, the, the suspension here is not that stiff, but also not soft so it's a good compromise we have the adaptive suspension and in that sports mode then we have a little bit more feedback from the suspension that's actually good steering is quite direct and really light even in the sports mode so there's not much feedback from the steering wheel we have the integral active steering in here that's the option with the rear axle steering and that gives us more stability at higher speeds because the rear wheels are steering in the parallel direction at lower speeds in the opposite one and this that is giving us more agility it makes everything let's say a little a little bit less um, uh, natural from the feeling but it delivers a great advantage when a turning circle is, for example, is narrow, narrow and uh, just easing in and out of a, pile, of a basement garage, for example. So um, overall, a very good option to have for a rather large sedan, definitely. You've maybe heard it. Um, yeah, I mean, was maybe a little bit influenced by the rain as well. Uh, the, the noise installation is overall very good, so not 
too much noise at higher speeds indeed. And here now in the tunnel, you hear it as well, it's staying relatively calm. Really looking forward how it will be in the Audi, if it will be more silent or not. Here you can also see the ambient lighting very well. Look at that here and that. So that looks really, really fancy indeed. Very nice and subtle integration of the, I've said it now to blue, you can also change the colors, of course. So that six cylinder also gave us a nice sound and it's really, to me, the right sized engine for this week. You don't need the eight cylinder from the M5 um, or the M550i. They both have the, have the eight cylinder in there. So the 540i to me is the right pick for this vehicle. You can also pick it as, as rear wheel drive, at least in the States. And that gives us, you know, more accelerating out of the corners in a more agile way. Here, it still has a rear-wheel bias from that all-wheel drive, but to have the rear-wheel drive version only can be more fun at times. Also better as for the fuel economy, but if you're not speeding it that much on the motorway, but rather driving in a calm way or cruise control, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour predominantly, and so on, you can score some 9 liters on motor kilometers, 26 mbg US, 31 mbg UK, if you rather keep it you know, rather steady and not hammer it out all the way on the motorway so it's not it's not that inefficient and you have a lot of driving fun uh, con considering that now here accelerating out of the corner uh, really nicely done good grip ah, nice sound yeah and still you feel the rear wheel bias from the all-wheel drive so yeah that's a really lovely thing to have Really, really nice. Ah, yeah, that engine has, yeah, in, in German we would say like cultivation. And there's this um, German word we say Laufkultur, as you know, direct translation would be like the, you know, how, yeah, well, it's not like the culture of the, of the engine, but it's more like, you know, the, the, the good feature of the engine and running in the, low frequency sonorous way you don't have to push it because when you switch to the comfort mode suspension is a little bit softer everything is easier rpm stay lower and you can easily cruise that vehicle and well shockingly to me is that this vehicle is equipped with cruise control only of course you have the adaptive cruise control with active lane keeping assist and so on and so on but it's still an option and how can this vehicle be so expensive and fully packed and this is not even included so yeah the pricing policy is not really that fair, that's always the thing. One more time a tunnel and then we get to one more acceleration. I already put it once again in sports mode, then the gauges also change a little bit. And we can listen one more time to the noise installation when it's not raining that hard. So now we're starting at 80 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out, let's see. That's 150. I'll stop here right now. Wow, that's that's really nice. Again, I'm keeping it rather safe. Wow, at the end of the corner is also such a great handling. So although you're driving a big sedan, you have a lot of sporty driving fun. That's really nice. Yeah, the only thing is really that I would wish for a little bit more feedback from that steering. And I told I told you about that sometimes subscribers know. I think BMW lost the way there a little bit. So in the past, it was the other way around. Like BMWs were the hardest to steer and you had so much feedback. I mean, that some even said like, ah, I don't want to drive that one. It's so hard to steer actually, you know, it's like it just creates too much effort. But then the servo steering came and so on and everything got better. And then they still had natural feeling. But now nowadays, I think they tend to be a little bit too loose from that steering and I think that has to change definitely so let's go back here right lane it just gives me a very very nice feeling the comfort from these seats here by the way is in this case not top-notch and it's really the thing although the seat form stays the same but when you get it with the new perforated Sensatec seats I've shown to you in the interior part there when we had another vehicle 
it really gives you so much more comfort in driving because the surface is more plush you have this perforation inside there and this special stitching which makes some kind of individual cushions on the seat this i'm really surprised how much more comfort they bring while driving you know i've driven a vehicle with that one and these seats here are in comparison and rather uncomfortable so be aware to stick with the perforated syntax seats and if you can't get them in your market ask for it so all the bmws that are built in true bmw plants it's of course the case also for the 5 series usually they make it possible for the customer to say like i know this car exists in this spec and now it leaves the plant that's way i would i will buy one when you get me my wish you know it's yeah can't hurt to try that definitely you know countryside driving still a lot of fun the car is not leaning at all to the sides and at the same time the suspension stays comfortable so the suspension here as for the like this compromise of comfort and sportiness i love it and it's not an air suspension here in this vehicle and you can easily live with that so it's not like oh i would need an air suspension to get more comfort no this adaptive suspension by bmw is one of the best there is on the market and it's doing a phenomenal job in this case this, the, the driving experience is a little bit softer because we have 18 inch wheels mounted and with winter tires and that gives me more dampening from the tire itself um, you know so the whole interior concept and the feeling it is definitely laid out on sportiness also the, the how the seats are and so on so definitely we already feel right now that here the 5 series is appealing more to a customer that appreciates sportiness in driving. As I said, the comfort is there, especially then when you went for the Sensatec seats. But what about some fast, agile driving in tighter corners? For example here, <laughs> at the traffic light. Yeah, here again, you know, like, it is 90 degrees, it's good, but to me, a little bit of a feedback for fe a more feedback from the steering wheel would actually be good. Yeah, and the drive mode selected here, I mean, it's easy to reach, it's actually uh, no problem and having the OS7 here not the all new OS8 while driving yeah it's actually such a relief it's way easier to control this system here. but now to the tight corners and there we go a little more tight many corners some leaves on the road to be careful of course we can go once again to the sports mode let's see so smooth shifting yeah, all-wheel drive, give me, all drive giving us good traction here. Nice sound from the engine and the road is quite rough. The suspension is still doing a good job keeping up the comfort. Let's see here now that rear axle steering. Wow, it's getting that vehicle around. That's really nice. Let's get the instruction work going on here. Good acceleration out of the car now. This S bend here, wow, beautiful. So the rear axle steering really makes the car more agile, especially at lower speeds. Then, and yeah, I mean, it can feel kind of strange also when you go left and right like this. You do feel it. You feel like the rear end of the vehicle is indeed moving, and it does. You know, that it, it's a weird feeling, but you get used to it. Once again, it's not a natural feeling but it gives you more agility and especially it's so much easier to maneuver that vehicle around than when it gets a little bit narrow in like I said, basement garage and so on. So yeah, great performance here from the driving part. But the question is, is the A6 better or worse or are they equal? And here we go with the Audi A6 also at the three liter petrol engine with all wheel drive. And let's put it to the dynamic mode and it automatically goes to the S shifting mode. We'll also start at 40 kilometers an hour. Let's see how the acceleration goes here. Let's go. 100. 150. Plop, and that's 200 kilometers an hour. Now the road is dry, of course but we, I could go with the acceleration with the BMW as well. The acceleration figure to 100 km an hour or 62 miles an hour are exactly identical. Also, same horsepower amount. 
Here also suspension in that adaptive mode goes stiffer at higher speeds. And we have 19 inch wheels instead of 18 inch wheels, also with winter tires. And yeah, that feels indeed a little bit sportier from the suspension, surprisingly. Here we do have the adaptive air suspension that is built in this very test vehicle. And that also gives us a wide span between stiffer and not so stiff. I was really kind of surprised that this setup here seemed sportier at higher speeds indeed than with the BMW, although the whole cockpit layout and so on is rather set on this luxury tone and not necessarily on the sporty tone. So that's where, where the BMW gives you more the first feeling of being sportier. But here suspension-wise, especially when you are in that dynamic mode, this one seemed actually even sportier. And also steering is a huge difference. So the Audi gives us a better steering feeling indeed. It is very precise and direct, but gives me more feedback already in the auto mode. Let's see in the dynamic mode. That doesn't change too much actually. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but not too much actually. Um, so there the steering changes also with the BMW a little bit more probably, but still the big difference is the Audi has the more precise steering. It gives me more feeling of what I am experiencing on the road. So, and I will also um, confirm that later on probably when we have the winding corners part. So the steering feel is definitely a point for the Audi. Suspension wise, I told you with the BMW, it's a great suspension. So suspension wise, um, both do a very good job. Um, yeah, I mean, 18 inch winter tires um, for the BMW, it will be a little bit, wow, that's phew, low standing blinding sun now. Um, so with the BMW, with summer tires and bigger wheels, it will also be a little bit more equal. But yeah, both suspensions are doing a great job. Also, if you do not have air suspension here, but just go with the normal adaptive suspension here with the Audi, it would also be just fine. Um, to me, really, the big difference is the steering feel, which this one, you know, this one is definitely uh, won by Audi. And yeah, isn't there something going on there? There, I mean, when you think about a steering feel comparison, shouldn't the BMW win this? You know, like from the brand identity wise. So um, I think this. Yeah, that definitely I'm addressing the BMW engineers. You have to win back the steering feeling game. So um, it can't be like the, you know, the, the, the real thing for the company that Audi is winning this aspect in the comparison, right? Isn't it? But here to me, the steering wheel is perfect. So Audi is nailing it with the steering feeling. At this moment, I think that Audi and Porsche um, they together deliver you the best steering feeling in all vehicles. So still comfortable, but sporty, and you have a direct feeling of what you are experiencing on the road. And you will also see now um, this next traffic light in here, the green now, and now there is exactly a 90 degree bend. And look, look what the steering is doing. So 90 degree bend, and here just a little bit more because there's this, you know, that's tighter corner in the middle, but you know, you almost have the copy of what's being done on the road. And I think that's a very, very good thing to have. It gives you orientation and it gives you so much control over the vehicle. The consumption figure here, by the way, kind of equal. You can also score the very same consumption figures. Um, also some nine liters, small kilometers, 26 MPG US, 31 MPG UK. So both same engine, same equal, you know, same power, house power output. One is V6, the other is R6. Um, two different, like how the cylinders are oriented. That's by that's meant by that. Um, that isn't too big of a difference. That's why I picked these two vehicles for the comparison today. That you really can compare them. Now the interesting thing is with the all-wheel drive system. We're also experiencing when I'm accelerating out here um, at the traffic light. So I let this um, veto there. There must be a motorcycle in that Vito. Has, they, they put a Yamaha uh, logo on the back of that Mercedes Vito. Um, that's a fun thing, right? So, um, but maybe not the best thing for burglars, you know, because when they know the Yamaha logo, it's like, oh, there must be some nice motorcycle inside. I'm gonna take a look at that. So when I'm accelerating out of the corner here now, here like this, here once again, 90 degree steering wheel, 
and yeah, it's beautifully done indeed, such a good feeling. And the key thing is here, when you hear, does not only have a Yamaha in the back here, obviously also has NOS injection. <laughs> so with the all-wheel drive, Quattro is not always Quattro. They are like several several different Quattro uh, systems at Audi and when you have the three liter engines, three liter six cylinders, both diesel and petrol. So here on the petrol side, this one here, and also the S6 and also the R6. The S6 in the US. In Europe they went for the diesel for the S6, but then you also have the three the diesel, of course, you know. And of course the R6 and with that eight cylinder. So when you have these big engines, then you still have a rear wheel bias with the Quattro system. So the all-wheel drive systems here are comparable. However, if you think in comparison of the lower entry versions, 5 Series versus A6, then the 5 Series would give us clearly a better agility driving out of the corners. Let's say you pick a 2-liter 4-cylinder and then you make it with rear-wheel drive for the BMW and you pick a 2-liter 4-cylinder for the Audi and then you have the uh, front wheel biased quattro overdrive. drive and that's of course not that cool so now from 100 kilometers an hour, an hour and again another acceleration picking it up very well wow 150 170 of course now the road is really a little bit, little bit drier so i can drive a little bit faster 200 and wow it gives me such a great controlled feeling over the vehicle. So I have to say, yes, bearing in mind, this is a wheel bigger here, but still it's 18 versus 19 inch winter tires in the comparison, so that's okay. Um, here, of course, in the air suspension, but the suspensions are still in the... No, I don't want any traffic announcement. Ah, oh, that's... Wow, that's super annoying, right? So, um, yeah, DAB announcement off. I hate that when, yeah, goodbye. So back to the vehicle, sorry about that. So I'm kind of astonished a little bit that the Audi gives me a more controlled feeling over the vehicle. And that's to me a surprise. Maybe I would have expected that from the, you know, when I have an S6, but here at the usual A6, wow. That's, that's really a thing, you know. Everyone, maybe before watching this review, was thinking, ah, okay, yeah, the BMW will be the sportier and the A6 will be the more comfortable one. So, and the conclusion is, if you go more comfort, then pick the A6. If you want to go sporty more, then go, go for the 5 series. No, actually, this one here does feel sportier as for the characteristics. Um, it's a really weird thing, you know. So, um, suspension, steering setup and so on. But the BMW first has the sportier impression, you know, exterior, how the interior is oriented, how the car makes you feel in the first place. But then when you experience the vehicle, the A6 feels more sporty, especially in that sense of I'm in control. Oh, and turning indicator sound, that one is better with the BMW, by the way. Very well done. Yeah, that's interesting. So the engine characteristic is a little bit different. They are actually just purely from the engine wise, the BMW makes a sportier impression. So from the driving dynamics, the Audi is sportier, I feel. Engine wise, the BMW is sportier. The, like this, you know, I told you earlier, this love culture thing. The BMW six cylinder has a better sound and also seems to be a little bit more spontaneous in a way um, yeah wow it's I, I can already tell you right now it's getting super tough guys so hmm yeah the, 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 the engine is more emotional with the BMW and again steering is definitely better with the Audi so whew, it's really a tough one now countryside driving here also very relaxed talking about the comfort really nice you can enjoy every bend here and the seat surfaces, you don't have these good um, sensor tech options like you have with the BMW, with the Audi, especially not on the US market. And 
in the German market, for example, we can also get Dynamica microfiber on the seat here. That would be way to go for, but also not animal free. Mm, but the, like the, the ergonomics on the base seat, they are better, especially for tall people with the Audi. So they have better seat ergonomics in a way. BMW then offers these new seating surfaces. So that's, I think, a thing of the market. I told you that here, these concise test vehicles today, there the Audi offers more seating comfort. However, it would look different than when you compare the Sensatec, the new preferred Sensatec seats with the BMW. There it's at least equal or maybe even the BMW is better. So um, when I'm ordering, ordering these test vehicles for comparisons, I try to make it as equal as, as possible, but I cannot configure a, a vehicle and that is getting built then. You know, that's not possible, obviously. So, but this was the closest um, I could get for this comparison. So I always tell you more about my experience with maybe other vehicle versions of the same vehicle, where we then, you know, have a fair uh, comparison even, or uh, more tips of which concise uh, trim to pick and so on. So what about the winding corners here? All right, sporty driving, tight corners, dynamic mode. Let's see. Ah, now I feel that this air suspension when it sets on the sports or dynamic trim, it's indeed rougher than with the BMW adaptive suspension. That's super interesting. And that also explains why it is sportier on the motorway, yeah, on the cause of comfort on these rough roads. That's interesting. Now here, look at the steering characteristic. Tight corner and all we drive. Nice. Really very well to control, so much fun. Ah, beautiful, really beautiful. And this is a very interesting comparison now. So once again here, steering, steering feel, control of the vehicle, pro Audi. Engine power curve, I feel is cooler and sportier with the BMW. Driving fun, great with both. Suspension in this case here is stiffer than, uh, with the Audi, although it's the air suspension comparing here the sports mode. And how the car comes out of the corners? Well, the A6 also offers the rear axle steering, but I have to say you feel it more with the 5 Series indeed. So, hmm, yeah, really, really tough thing. So I feel that the 5 Series would come out of the corners a little bit better. Um, yeah, but it, it's really, really a close call. So you have a lot of elements that speak for the BMW. You have other elements that speak for the Audi. Whew. Well, the driving party hasn't made it easy on me, neither on you. But which one would I take home? Which one would I take home? Today it's really, really tough. It's a very tricky question. So. Exterior-wise, I have to say, I love both. Both have their very distinctive styling. The BMW, to me, a little bit sportier. The A6, more German Bauhaus design, but still has a lot of elegance. So exterior-wise, I really love them both. So you can find a lot of elements on the exterior design to love. Definitely. Yeah, you need the Matrix LED, LED headlamps with the Audi, that's for sure, to have you know, the nice turning indicators and so on. Interior-wise, the styling looks cleaner in the Audi and to me a little bit more modern actually. So from the interior concept, I think the Audi wins. More legroom in the rear, that's also important. The trunk is a little bit better usable. The only thing maybe the BMW has better that you have these, you know, this control knob here for the infotainment system that you can choose between touch and controlling. The Audi is touch only. The BMW also has the manual climate knobs. But for a touch-only solution, this is one of the best touch-only solutions there in the Audi. And the whole visualization of the infotainment system, maybe a little bit better in the Audi, but infotainment system to me, both are actually fine. I like the possibility that you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a cable solution still, because that's more stable and faster. The BMW only offers that wireless charging possibility. That's to me a downside. When then as for driving, both drive exceptionally well. 
So it's really a tough question there too. The BMW engine to me a little bit livelier and better in the sound. The engine itself is more fun in the BMW, whereas the steering is way more fun in the Audi. Seating comfort especially and while driving longer. The ergonomics of the seat in the Audi is, Audi is better. However, BMW leads it with the SensorTech material perforated. We haven't seen today, but we had it in the other review. That's where they are a little bit more advanced. Meanwhile, Whew, suspension, both actually awesome. Also depends on the individual setup you pick, but no matter which suspension you go for, with both vehicles, they will also always be very good. So in the driving fun, both are very, both are a lot of fun to drive actually. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the question is to me, for example, steering feel is very important. That's why I enjoy this one, especially in the Audi. Then again, I enjoy the engine in the BMW. So um, this time it's really not about this is the clear winner. And because of this and this and this, it's all, you know, throughout the review, we could say like, yeah, this is better with the BMW. This is a little bit better with the Audi. That made it so interesting. So yeah, just rewatch the whole thing if you haven't made up your mind yet. And I'm still struggling myself. Um, price wise, very interesting, by the way. Although, I mean, it's ridiculous. Both cars here close to 90,000 euros as they stand here right now, fully equipped. But that's not even fully equipped. What is that? Here, the Audi, it's over 90,000 euros. And then you don't have the Matrix LED included. And this one here, a little bit under 90,000 euros. So there's a price gap of like 8,000 euros or something between the two cars. That, that, so the Audi is more expensive. But then also with the BMW, almost 90,000 euros and no adaptive cruise control included for that. So the pricing policy is really to be highly criticized with both vehicles. Maybe uh, for me, it would come down to the market. So especially in the US, where I can only go with animal skin seats here on the Audi, I would pick the BMW with the new perforated sensor tech. In the UK and in Germany, where I also have more choice with dynamical microfiber seats, for example, yeah, they're not animal free yet completely. That's of course a thing to consider yet. But there I would maybe tend more towards the Audi because of the um, steering feel, for example, and a little bit more, you know, like the better uh, seat ergonomics and that the interior concept is a little bit more open and spacious. Um, yeah. But I think it will also be a case of getting concise offer from your dealer or on the used car market, depending on which one you, you get, and then really compare it because you will enjoy both vehicles. And to me, they are both together. Still, you know, one of the most desirable stands on the market. Also, if you compare them to the competition. So in this segment, I think here we picked the top notch overall on the car market. Which one would you take home? Would you struggle? Would you like to take both or how do, do you actually have a clear winner and why don't I take both? Yeah, I just take both. So, um, sorry Audi, sorry BMW, I'll just keep both keys. <laughs>